you've just spawned into a brand new world or realm and might be asking yourself, what now? Well, my name's Swarly and I'm here to help you on your journey of knowledge, fun, and exploration. I'm going to break down the seven topics I think are most important, starting with collecting. We are going to be keeping our eyes open for the items wood, wool, and seeds, as well as the perfect biome to thrive in. Get your bearings after your initial spawn and start traveling towards the nearest trees that you can locate. There are many variations, but on a base level, they all serve the same function when it comes to crafting. The different trees do offer variations in color or design on certain items. Wood is the first step towards getting tools and is the basis for many early building recipes, so I recommend punching down at least 20 wood before moving on. Although we won't be delving into gardening in this tutorial, seeds and other crops can be hard to come by and are important to collect for early game farms. The most basic crop to find is wheat. Although it has a lower drop percent than other crops, wheat tends to spawn in larger quantities. Simply break the grass until you come across this. If you are interested in me making a farming guide, let me know in the comments below. As it happens in Minecraft, I spawn in a mesa, which is resource poor for early game. So I picked a direction and ran for greener pastures, literally, and I found them. On top of being a beautiful location, this has grass, livestock, and crops. We need to collect the last thing on our list, which is wool. We need wool to craft a bed, which allows us to make a custom spawn point in case anything bad happens. And with that, let's move on to the next topic, foods. For this, I'm going to keep it to three points, animals, crops, and fish. Animals or livestock are a good source of food, but are harder to keep up with because you need a large supply of wheat, carrots, or other feed to maintain their population. There are seeds to start a garden, but again, this takes time to grow and we need something immediately. So I recommend using fish as your main source of food early on. You don't need a fishing pole to gather certain fish, so you can hop into the nearest body of water and snatch them up like your gollum. I know fish are animals, but I've categorized these separately since you can eat fish without cooking them. They will fill your hunger bar less than cooked fish, but this gives you a sustainable food that doesn't require a fuel source. Crafting. Our goal here is simply to build a crafting table and a furnace. To build your crafting table, you are going to first open up your inventory and take the logs that you pulverize like Arnold Schwarzenegger after inhaling an entire G Fuel container, place them into the 2x2 crafting area at the top of the menu. You will see that this satisfies the recipe to make wooden planks. I would turn every log that you have into wooden planks except for one. We are going to need that log when it comes to shelter defense. Now place a wooden plank into each of the four crafting slots and this will allow you to create your very first crafting table. With the crafting table at the ready, you've just made such a large step into advancing in Minecraft. As of edition 1.19, there are 379 different recipes in the game. Place your crafting table down and we are going to get a sneak peek at the next topic and create our first tool, the wooden pickaxe. The green book icon to the left of the crafting slots builds the recipes for you, but I didn't have that when I started playing, so I built them myself out of habit. Place two wooden planks on top of each other and create your sticks. Next, place a stick in the center slot and one directly underneath it, and fill the top row with wooden planks. Voila, you are now the proud owner of a wooden pickaxe with 2 attack damage and 1.2 attack speed. Just barely better than your hands. I generally put my pick in slot 1. If you're playing on a keyboard, these are hotkeyed to 1 through 9. Go ahead and take that pickaxe for a stroll and break down some cobblestone. Similar to the wood, I recommend mining 20 stone for the time being. In this view, you can see the recipe book that I mentioned opened. Take 9 pieces of cobblestone all the way around the crafting slots, leaving the center open for your furnace. The furnace is used to cook your meat, but is also used to smelt ores. I don't know about you, but I enjoy my mutton to have an aftertaste of gold. We can now test our furnace out by putting a piece of raw meat into the item slot on the top and sacrificing your wooden pickaxe as a fuel source. Cooked meat satiates the hunger much more than most of the other food items in the game. Tools. We are starting with the pickaxe, the most important of all the tools in the game in my personal opinion. The recipe for this requires two sticks and three blocks of your building material. Unlike every other tool, the pickaxe is the only tool in which the building material actually affects what the tool's function is. For example, the wooden pickaxe cannot get anything more than your average stone, such as cobblestone, andesite, or marble. The stone pickaxe can get you iron and coal, but you will need to upgrade to an iron pickaxe to get the rest of the elements. 
Next, we are on to the axe. The axe requires two sticks and three blocks of your building material to craft. The axe's main use is to chop down trees much more efficiently. But on top of that, the axe also has 9 attack damage and 8 attack speed. Now that's 4 more points of damage than the sword, but half the speed. Making this a great alternative if you don't have enough materials to build both an axe and a sword, or if you'd like to save a spot in your inventory. Tool 3 is the shovel. Now the shovel requires 2 sticks and a single block of your building material. This is really straightforward and is used to dig up dirt, sand, and other soft blocks. Next up is the hoe. The hoe requires two sticks again and two blocks of your building material. Again, we aren't really touching on gardening in this tutorial, but this tool is used in tandem with a water source to transform dirt into a suitable home for crops. Last, but certainly not least, is the sword. The sword requires one stick and two blocks of your building material. The sword deals 5 attack damage and can be swung with an attack speed of 16. You can craft any of the aforementioned tools out of wood, stone, iron, gold, diamond, or netherite. Pro tip though, gold tools have good stats but they are incredibly short on durability. And it's time to delve into the dark cave systems of Minecraft. Well, it's almost time. Temporary shelter is the next topic we need to tackle. Right now, I wouldn't worry about building anything too pretty. Until I get a good handle on my resources, I like to make my base using the area we mined our cobblestone from. Make sure you have a 4x4 area dug out that is 2 blocks high. This will give you enough room for everything you need. Once a location is picked, you need to worry about security, so close off all the open areas and leave a 1x2 space for a door. Go ahead and relocate the crafting table and furnace that you made earlier into here. A door requires 6 wooden planks, stacked 2x3 and will yield you 3 doors. Take that and place it. Now there shouldn't be any unwanted visitors tapping you on the shoulder while you're in your crafting menu. Let's build ourselves a bed. For this you need 3 wooden planks and 3 blocks of the same colored wood. The bed allows you to sleep through the night and by clicking on the bed it automatically designates this as your new spawn point. The chest is up next and requires 8 wood planks, leaving the center open. Here you can store items and if you place two next to each other it actually becomes a double chest. By this point it is very possible that your inventory is pretty full, so feel free to put away anything you don't think is useful. You can see the day is drawing to an end and it's starting to get dark which is when the hostile mobs start to spawn. We need to craft torches and haven't gone caving for coal, but there is a workaround. Take the one wooden log that you saved earlier and put it on the top slot of the furnace and using a wood plank as fuel, let's cook that. This will create charcoal. Take one stick and place the charcoal on top of it to get four torches. Torches increase the light level and subsequently doesn't allow mobs to spawn anywhere that is bright. Let's place two of these on the inside and two on the outside to keep us protected and rest for the night. And while I have you here, please hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the content. Our last stop before caving is mobs. I'm going to touch on the five that you will most commonly interact with although there are many more. Starting with the zombie. Zombies on their own are pretty easy to deal with. They are slow and can only punch you. Their true advantage comes from strength and numbers, so make sure you don't end up backed into a corner like you're on an episode of The Walking Dead. Zombies along with a select few others actually light on fire when it becomes a daytime. Mob 2 is skeletons. Skeletons deal in ranged attacks that deliver a blowback when they hit you. Try using obstacles and serpentining when closing distance on them. They also fall into the category of mobs that ignite during the day, but skeletons are more intelligent and will seek shade. No game would be complete without the not-so-friendly eight-legged creatures. You guessed it, spiders. Spiders don't require steps and can scale flat vertical structures, giving them a bit of a stealthier approach in certain situations. Spiders do not die in the sunlight, but they do become dormant and will not aggro unless you initiate the attack. Chances are, if you've ever heard or seen anything related to Minecraft, you've seen the iconic Creeper. Their only attack is an explosion that can easily destroy your builds and send you back to the spawn. Best course of action to defeat them is to hit them and run away over and over until they are taken care of. That's around 3 hits depending on your weapon. Now Creepers aren't weak and the daytime has no effect on them. Last is the Witch, but for some reason I call them Wizards which may trigger some people, but hey, that's me. Witches have a ranged attack. They throw a few different splash potions, and they are quite effective. Take care of them quickly in a battle or circumvent them altogether if possible. 
If you lose all of your hearts, you will be sent to the spawn and drop all of your loot. And if you die by an explosion, it has a chance of destroying your items. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, caving! There is so much to cover in caving that I could make an entire video about it. Heck, maybe I will. So I'm going to touch on six elements that I think are important. This is the coal I mentioned earlier. Coal is used to make torches and as a fuel source for furnaces and other cookers that can generally be found at higher elevations and at the mouths of many caving systems. Quick side note, if you ever run out of torches in a cave, you could actually make them in the 2x2 crafting slot in your inventory. Iron is the next ore I want to address. Iron is generally easy to find towards the top levels of a cave as well. You can mine this with a stone pickaxe and after smelting it in the furnace, you get iron ingots. With those you can make stronger and faster tools, smithing tables, and even a full set of armor which I highly recommend before going too far in. This is redstone, and redstone is like the electricity of Minecraft. It is used to make contraptions, machines, and has so very many uses. Redstone is found deeper in the mines and requires an iron pickaxe to get. This is gold. Gold is found in the upper to middle levels of a mine and needs an iron pickaxe as well. Now, gold isn't all that useful in my opinion, but can be used to make clocks, powered rails, and is used to trade with and keep you safe from piglins. Diamonds! In the overworld, this is the best material you can get for crafting armor and tools. Diamonds are found in the furthest depths of the world and definitely require an iron pickaxe to obtain. Before you even think about traveling into the nether, you should have at least a full set of diamond armor. Emeralds are last on the list. These can be found in the top three quarters of the world. To the best of my knowledge, these are only used to make a beacon and to trade with villagers and wandering traders. On the surface, Minecraft seems like a simple game, but there is so much more than meets the eye. I have been playing for over 10 years and am constantly learning new things about the game all the time. I hope I've given you the tools that you need to survive out there. If you're interested in any other videos like builds, go ahead and check out my channel because we have more there. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It's my goal to help educate players both old and new, and I would love to hear if there are any topics that you want to know more about. I stream here on YouTube Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 8.30pm Central Standard Time if you want to join in on the fun. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you on the next one. Swarly out.